Gospel and Homily for the fourth Sunday of Lent, Year C. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained. This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. A man had two sons. The younger said to the father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that would come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine and now he began to feel the pinch. So he hired himself out to one of the local inhabitants who put him on the farm to feed the pigs. And he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than they want, and here am I dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and he went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. Then his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we've been fattening and kill it. We're going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and he's come back to life. He was lost and he's found. And they began to celebrate. Now, the elder son was out in the fields and on his way back as he drew near the house he could hear music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed the calf we've been fattening because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry, and he refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you and never once disobeyed your orders, yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you kill the calf we've been fattening. The father said, My son, you are with me always, and all I have is yours. But it was only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead, and he's come back to life. He was lost, and he's found. The Gospel of the Lord. People pick up different images of God as they grow up. Some may have stored in their memory an image of God somewhat removed from that of the Father in today's story that you've just heard. He has sometimes been presented as inaccessible or remote, difficult to please, a strict disciplinarian, a never off duty policeman. Often these caricatures of God stay with a person not for the better, might I add. Now the father in the story is over the moon to see his son back home. He is so moved with pity that he puts to one side all the heartache his son has caused him. All the prodigal did was swallow his pride, return to his father and seek forgiveness. And that's the bit that we have to do as well. 
This errant son could have stayed where he was, wallowing in his misery, and miss out on the father's welcome, the father's love, the father's concern. The choice was his. When God forgives, he doesn't do it in halves. The psalmist put it like this in the Old Testament. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. Now, when we show a willingness to put the past failures behind us, God will give us every help to live more virtuous lives like he did for the prodigal son. But we can also be God's instrument in helping others to turn their life round as well. St. John Henry Newman, who was canonized here in this country in 2010, he said, to live is to change and to live well is to have changed often. To help others bring about that change in their lives is truly a Christ-like act. Compared to the prodigal, the elder, son, the elder son in the story has his own problems, even though on the surface he looked really the genuine article. This part of the story is added because the self-righteous Pharisees had little or no time for anyone who took a wrong turning in life regardless of whether they came back on track or not. The sullen elder brother stands for them. But the Pharisees' complacent views doesn't sit easily with those of Jesus, who insists in another place in the Gospel that it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. We know that people who seriously flout the law of the land often do time, but those who break the moral law can also feel that same sense of estrangement. They're not themselves. In Ireland we say, you're not yourself today. You feel estranged when you sin, not just from yourself, but from other people as well. The story of the prodigal challenges us as Christians to make the most of a person's willingness to turn the corner. The father in the story gives his errant son every enticement to do so. One of the lessons from today's story is that we put aside the idea of earning God's love. Earned love is a contradiction in terms. We don't want to end up like the sullen elder brother who was very unforgiving towards his misbehaving sibling, despite the fact that he had left his wayward life behind. We need to be loved for whom we are and not forever branded by the mistakes of our past. The father loved the elder brother no less than the prodigal. Everything the father has would one day be his. I suppose, come to think of it, there's a bit of the prodigal and the elder brother in all of us. The only thing that remains constant is the father's mercy, which is freely given to those who earnestly seek it. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.